Well, Brian, there's been a retirement, been a retirement in the world of wrestling, some big major stars. I'm done with wrestling, done with the wrestling business. Did you hear about this? You read about this? I'm not sure who you're talking about. No. Well, Lars Sullivan oh. says he is done with wrestling. I guess that's because wrestling was done with him about a year, year and a half ago. That might have something to do with it, but <laughs> this guy, I've never met this guy and we're going to have fun today. I'm not, I have no knowledge of him wrestling the invisible man, uh, but this is probably a guy, one of the guys that OVW would have saved them a lot of trouble if, if they still had OVW as a developmental program and I was still in charge of it. Cause I bet you I'd have run this guy off before he ever got there because he seems like a mental incompetent first. Yeah. Well, the, the, the big scandal he was in was before he was signed to the WWE, I guess even before he was signed to their developmental program, he was on Twitter, of course, like everybody was making fairly extreme and or severe racist and homophobic comments, not, telling jokes like people accuse some people of but actually no these people are bad people and and bad things should happen to them and fuck these guys right that tone of thing and then they found out that the guy that was making the homophobic comments was in a, a homosexual pornographic feature which is nothing wrong with that but it seems like a contradiction in your philosophy right and that, did they fine him legitimately a hundred thousand dollars? Is this what you the the amount that you heard at the time, and it was repeated here recently? I remember hearing that, and it just seems incredible to me that it would be that amount of money, considering he was not a main eventer in any stretch of the word. A hundred thousand dollars seems pretty excessive. Yeah, I was, I was like, what? That's fucking. I mean, I'm, it's not like that. That Vince has not fined people. We know a hundred thousand dollars or more before that has happened, but this fuck that's like finding a fucking shoe shine guy a hundred thousand dollars. Where is he going to come up with that amount of money? I assume they took it out in installments out of his check, like Watch used to take installments of Buddy Landell's fines. But then they were still going to keep. Maybe that was the thing. Hey, instead of if we pay you two hundred grand a year because you're a fucking idiot, and you said this shit. We'll keep you because we had some kind of plans for you, but you're an idiot, and so we're just cutting your money in half for a year. I don't know. Anyway, after that they keep him, but he gets hurt, and he's injured, and then he's ready to come back now. But now, did he do something else stupid, or did they just say fuck it, you're done? Did they just fire him, or what? What's happened here? I'm not exactly sure. I don't even know if they fired him. From what I understand, he or if have... he just said he just said fuck it, I can't, I I, I quit because yeah. he said he's done with it. So he quit the WWE and he's done with wrestling. The reason I bring this up is because look at this fucking guy. He's six foot, however much. He's a jacked up bodybuilder. And he was on the internet whining about, well, I had such horrible anxiety on TV days. I could barely eat. Wow. You know what? On TV days, I could barely eat because I was too fucking busy because it's fucking TV day. You goddamn moron. You fucking lunatic. I'm so anxious. And it, yeah, you ought to have been getting down and kissing the concrete every time you walked in an arena that you were still had a fucking job and they were going to let you do this a little longer. I couldn't believe that when I heard, the, oh, I just couldn't barely eat on TV day. This is the, you know, when Undertaker said oh, everybody's soft in wrestling, everybody took it a different way, but I take it this way. This fucking clown, he never had to fucking work independent shows. He never had to work in the territories where you worked every single night, that's how you got good, but it also, it would break you if you were a mental fucking snowflake that got anxious on TV day and he could barely eat. You didn't have time to eat. You didn't eat on TV day because they had no food in the fucking building. You ate on your own time before you showed up to work. Now they fucking sit around in catering that looks like Morton's Steakhouse at these WWE tapings, and they fucking are anxious they have to go out there for six fucking minutes and do something it's fucking ridiculous 
this guy never had to fucking pound the fucking roads in the territories or he never had to work independent shows for a bunch of fucking people that didn't know what the fuck they were doing with a bunch of people that didn't know what the fuck they were doing. He was handheld through the WWF WWE training system. He was always on a contract. They even gave him another chance when he was obviously a fucking moron on the internet. And then he's just so fucking worried and anxious that he can't eat at TV. God damn it. I remember I've, I, at, at some points in my career over the last 30 years, I would have taken a fucking knife to somebody to steal their fucking food at TV tapings. But between managing or fucking working or promoting or booking or announcing or whatever the fuck, I was busy concentrating on what the fuck I was doing. He's oh Pete. So he's done with wrestling, Brian. Should we should we bake a cake or should we play some sad music? I think we should just shrug and move on. Maybe we could get one of our talented artists like Einar or Rocky or all the Nate, all the any of them to make sad music for when somebody decides they're done with wrestling because it's just too tough on them and they just get worried and anxious about it. 